Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus, and today you're gonna be playing with a team I haven't played in ah, maybe about two years or something like that, because you're gonna be playing with a Halo comp, but it's not really a Halo comp. It's a Halo comp, but with a uh, Helm Master in the back, so it's a very special variation of it, and one that I do actually quite like. I used to call it Halo comp, but actually fun, because instead of having to rely on one shot, you can actually use a Toki, which is a much cooler character, obviously. And we can have both the pressure of Caltrips, the Blood Red Coin on the Jester to do a lot of damage to my opponent, and the Hound's Harry to just bleed them out instead of having to always damage them out. And of course, we still have a Crescent in the front to just get stuns and, uh, you know, just do the usual. So we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get a double dodge from that Blood Grenade. That is very, very helpful. I was kind of expecting just getting, uh, kind of demolished there for a little bit, but I'm very glad that's not the case. And I'm just gonna do a stun on this Crusader. Really nothing wrong with it, just 3 9 damage. If you let me drop a Caltrips, I might get even more uh, 3 damage on there. They're probably gonna transform and slam my Bounty Hunter here, which will prevent me from going finishing, which was an idea. If I had gone for a stun on the Abomination, that's risky. Uh, it's gonna work though. If I had gone for a stun on the Abomination, I would have probably have gone for the finishing, because it would have dealt a lot of damage, but since that's not what happened, I'll just go ahead and... Uh, and, you know, just pass, I guess. But we're gonna drop a Hound's area, and here comes the DOT. So kind of the idea behind this team is to just go three rounds into the match, and then your opponent's gonna be like, wait, where's all my HP? Because you've dropped Caltrops, you've dropped Harvest, you've dropped a few stuns, and you've dropped Hound's area after Hound's area. So all their AP just starts dissipating, and then you don't have the best killing shots, especially when your Tyrant team is, uh, you know, just getting stunned by what I have now realized is a triple stun team. <laughs> and uh, But uh, we should still be able to, to pull some things off, right? We do also have a guard, this team, which is quite useful. It's not amazing, but it can be helpful. So we're gonna drop the Caltrips now and fail the bleed on the Crusader. That's uh, the one character I wanted to bleed on the most, because that's the character with protection, right? That's the one I want to bleed with. Oh well, failing the 80% chance. There should be a compilation of me failing 80% Caltrops chances, because I feel like it happens more often than not. It's it's not an 80, it's like a 50-50. Into a double zealous crit for 15 and 18. Wow, okay. Okay, I see how it is. Well, um alright. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna go into the into the worst moments compilation. That's for sure. Since that video, I just look at these moments. I'm like, yep, that's uh, that's the worst compilations moment. And I feel like there's so freaking many. The next one's gonna be so juicy. At least at least I hope it is. So we are gonna get manacles here again. Please don't do nine. Okay, that's not nine. It's almost. And look at this, going for a stun. No, I did not uh, have the stun resistance anymore, so I guess it does make sense. I'm gonna go ahead and click here on the Crusader because I don't want to uh, just walk into a double play grenade immediately. If they want to go for the putting my bounty hunter at this door, they're gonna have to do it through noxious. Noxious Blast, which is uh, a lot better for me. There goes another crit. This is not a novice, this is a veteran. I don't know why they're getting novice RNG here. That's three crits on characters with low crit. If they were characters with like very high crit chances, then you know, sure. But no, they're not. They're really not. Well, I'm gonna drop the Harvest just to drop these two down to zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Dirk Snap on the Crusader, hopefully do some okay damage. And then these two are gonna attrition down. The Divine Confort, interesting, yeah, it doesn't do too much. And the Crusader is going to attrition down as well, so... Right now I have to make a decision, and it is a difficult decision to make, let's be honest. Because my Bounty Hunter is kind of in a really shitty spot. I have an interesting call. I do have an interesting call here. The, I could go for a guard, it's generally an idea, because if they want to transform Slam, they will have to they will have to push me to the back and put my chest in a position where I can do something good. But instead I'm just gonna go for a pull on this plague doctor, put her in a position where she can't use her heal. And I think even though my idea was good to go for the guard, I don't wanna waste my doggy action on that. I'd rather just go for something like this. Also I've not I'm not going for the Hound's Rush because I feel like Hound's area is just overall better better ability in the situation. They also have protection, most of them, so it wasn't uh, great all the time. I don't know why you don't go for the death over there, that's kind of weird, but I'm definitely gonna um, gonna go for a stun on this Crusader now, since I have the choice to do so. So I haven't mentioned the trinkets, but uh, my Crusader has Sacred Blade and Rate of Execution, because I don't really need to get all the stuns, I just need to do a lot of damage to my opponent, because you see, like, it's around three other characters getting very low on HP, that was kind of the idea. 
because if they have good stun resistances, I can just go zealous zealous, and I just completely attrition them down, which is obviously amazing, right? Right now, I'm actually thinking of going for Hunt's Rush. I feel like it's not a terrible play, just to get some tempo going against this Plague Doctor. She does have that protection, but with this, the Vestal's now gonna have to go for a heal, or I can just get Death Row with Dirk Sap, and then have Finale Pressure, which is just awesome, right? Keep in mind that with Pod Red Coin, my Finale numbers are way, way bigger. So yeah, I have the Stun Chance and the Rate of Execution, just kind of general as Crusader, but it, but it works pretty well. Then the Bounty Hunter here is gonna get stunned by the 50-50, that's sad, but such is way of the Witcher Circus. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go for the 35, and we do take it, that's amazing. How much damage do we have? Not enough to kill that Abomination anymore. Yeah, that's sad. They still have all three stun characters, so technically they're perfectly fine, right? <laughs> yeah, technically. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a heal. Uh, over here, I could have dropped a guard onto this Jester, but I'm hoping that the 40 dodge doesn't let me down immediately, and I want to drop a Hounds area instead or something of the likes. Now, I now have enough time to finale that Abomination. I do 16 to 29, so I'm definitely going to go for it. If I can get a character, a two-character advantage, I'm 100% going to do it. So they miss that, they have a pass up as well, that means my Hounds area is going to get hit by it, so, you know, just 15 to 27. What? Why, why were my calculations wrong? I thought it was 16 to 29. Wait, that doesn't make any sense, though. Why is it 15 to 27? That's weird. I must be looking at something wrong. They are bleeding. I don't know why that's the case. I guess it is 15 to 27, not 16 to 29. But usually it's 14 to 25 with three finale buffs, right? 14 to 25, so it should be more than 15 to 27. That's weird. I don't know, maybe there was something else in play with that number that I had there. Weird, weird stuff. Well, we get a 9-11 reference here as for like every 10 videos, I guess, <laughs> and now the Bounty Hunter is really not gonna survive for too long. One thing I can do though is I can guard him, and then we'll still have our finishing character, which is uh, honestly probably a very good idea, so I'm gonna do that. And with the trinkets that I have on this Hound Master, I give myself plus 20 accuracy, which is just amazing for that Hound Harry. So with the 20 accuracy and with the battle battle, you're pretty much never going to miss Harry, which, you know, is just awesome. You're also going to get a lot of bleeds on it because of the attack whistle. And you also have 50 dodge after going for a guard, which is very decent amount of dodge, right? The Crusader is going to have a 50-50 chance of hitting you without having uh, Affliction debuffs, Death Store debuffs, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So now they are still not bleeding. They would be so much lower in HP if they were indeed, ble indeed bleeding, but oh well. well. Watch me go purchase here. I want to see that 30%. And now we go abusive, which is, <laughs> which is not very good, but he's not going to survive for long enough anyway. We're probably not going not gonna to see what comes of that. So here I'm just going to go ahead and drop a Hound's Harry, hopefully get a bleed on this Crusader, it's a 60, we do get it, that's very good. The reason we really want to get that bleed is because of the Dirk Snap to get extra damage, right, that's the idea. So I could have gone for the immediate pull on the Vessel, but there is no need, she can still do Dazzling Light from position 2, just as in position 4, doesn't really make too much of a difference. She's going to go for Comfort, which really doesn't get too much going. But yeah, at this point, my opponent, I don't think, has too much of a chance. Things could still happen here that change uh, that change how the match outcome happens. I mean, against the Stunned Crusader, you you never know, right? And with two characters at this store, but I'm pretty confident that we are winning this one, especially with a crit 16 right there. That feels very, very good to get. Pretty confident, but remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. So you should never take wins for granted. I've lost from being in a better position than this. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so we're gonna go Holy Lance. That doesn't really hurt me all that much. I could go for a stun here. I could go for a heal. Uh, I want to pull, but she has, she has May Smash, which, eh, sucks. I want to go for... I might go aggressive here, actually. Yeah, let's go aggressive. I'm gonna go for a Harry. Oh, I cleared the corpse. No... That's bad. Yeah, the, re the reasoning I had there was to go aggressive, make sure that these two characters are in position where I can hit them both with Harvest, and then you have two characters to hit here, so you definitely have to heal, or go for a kill on the on the Bounty Hunter, but either way you're probably screwed, because now my, my Crusader just goes for 
a bit of stress, that's fine. The 14, yeah, just goes for a zealous, yeah. And uh, now both your characters are afflicted, or almost afflicted, and your pestle is gone, unless paranoid does something very silly. And now it's definitely GG, so let's skip on to the end of the match. Alright, and there we go, and let's go on for match number two. Alright, and here we go for match number two against another veteran, so this should be a pretty fun one. Just looking at this, I see Flagellant with Madman Scholar and Last Breath Scholar. So they have both the colors on this Flagellant, and they do have Punish, but they have Suffer as well, so that's a very interesting setup. It's not as bad as it looks, honestly, having Punish and Suffer. So they're gonna go for a pull on my Bounty Hunter, and they have uh, the shot, they have a lot of bad things, a lot of things I don't really appreciate all that much, but at the very least they don't have to collect bounty. This is a very interesting mark team they have going, I like it. It looks a little bit like um, Mr. D's underdog comp, which also has a flagellant with suffer, except that one has a, a doggy, right? It has a doggy instead of an occultist, and um, I guess both of them work okay. The occultist is gonna be scary here. You should typically not go for sacrificial stab on characters that are already marked. That's really not the idea behind the sacrificial stab, but oh well. I could go for a battle battle, and I will. I feel like my opponent doesn't really have a lot of dodge, but I still want the accuracy buffs because I don't really have a lot of accuracy either. So, you know, if you have battle ballad, more often than not, just drop it and uh, just enjoy yourself. I do have two healers here. I'm probably not going to be able to make use of the regen because, you know, punish, but... Maybe I get a dodge. No, I have 45 dodge here. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, remember when I was talking about best and worst moments? This is a very, very rare occasion where I'm on the opposite end of, uh, of the 95% bleed chance. Usually, I get hit by the 95% bleed, as in, I don't get it. And then a crit happens to me, but now this is the complete opposite and I'm absolutely loving it. This is what it feels to play, <laughs> to play against Shepard Doggy. That is, that is fun. So we're gonna go for a name shot here, of course it's a crit, but we don't really mind. We're just gonna go ahead and heal ourselves and just pray that our dodge lets us dodge like a thing or two, right? So now their best play is 100% to go punish. Just punish the Houndmaster, get rid of my regen. And if you do that, um, please miss, it's a 70, I really want to see it miss. And if you do that, um, I will no longer have my regen and then you'd be perfectly, perfectly okay, right? But yeah, that's not going to be the situation here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I'm just going to drop another self heal and keep hoping that my dodge comes into play here. Because if you put in a lot of abilities into attacking a dodge character, and you put in a lot of abilities into healing a dodge character, eventually that's that's a good situation for the character that's trying to be on the defense because all those moves can miss, and if one of those moves miss, you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of pressure going for you. Now the problem here is I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die a terrible death. But before that happens, I can try and do something about it. But I don't think there is too much I can do about it. The thing is, I can go for a 70% stun chance. Who gets to go first? Uh, they do, actually. They get to go first as well. Yeah, I don't think there's too much I can do for my target here, sadly. I could try and heal him. Yeah, sure, let's try and heal him. You never know. Maybe they miss. There, there's a chance they miss. I have 30 dodge on there. There's a chance they miss, and if they miss, then I can stay alive, which is uh, exactly what I want, right? Yeah, hopefully it happens. Hopefully, but I'm not I'm not too sure that my dog is gonna be alive here. I was, I was also thinking of going for a stun on the bounty hunter, but for starters, it's not a very good chance. And uh, and they also have the musketeer to go for the kill if they if they want to. So yeah, now they're gonna go for the kill with the musketeer, which is not as good as it, of a chance. I could also go ahead and drop a uh, come hither here just to prevent that from happening if I really really want to. I could just have her do a buck shot rather than uh, rather than a named shot, but it also damages my crusade, which isn't amazing. But it could push my doggy back, which is good, so I am gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do that, and if they want to push my doggy back, my bounty hunter won't be stuck in position 4, which is exactly what I want here, right? So I won't say that this team is, like, really good. That's definitely not the idea behind this team. It's not a great team. It's not one of the most meta teams that you can bring, but it's it's definitely playable, that's that's for sure. And it's pretty fun. It has some very good matchups against, like, the stress teams. 
kind of like slow-ish stress teams, uh, you just do so much DoD that they're, they are absolutely not expecting it. This is definitely a hybrid damage team. It doesn't really need to do damage as it's only kill condition, it can do DoD as well. So we actually managed to survive the... Oh, they don't have the finisher. We actually managed to survive what was a 50% chance, I think. So now we can go ahead and click and go for a Hound's Rush or go for a Hound's Harry. Which one do I want to do? 12 to 24, huh? Hound's Rush or Hound's Harry? Such is the choice. Well, this could roll for like 15 and... Yeah, sure, it's good, but... You know what? It's actually pretty good. No! 12! <laughs> I rolled for 12. Now, my idea behind is that if I rolled pretty high, then the Holy Lance would just drop her down to zero, and then they need to start going for heals, so I can like kind of like shift the pressure onto them, which would have just been great. So they get a great 18, which is uh, just out of this world, to say the very least. And my Helm Master is once again in a terrible spot, but one thing I can do is I can move forward with a Dirk Snap, but do I want to move forward with a Dirk Snap? The answer is yes. I'm gonna Dirk Snap this Bounty Hunter, bring him down to zero, and this is when the match turns. This is when the DOT team feels like they're getting some pressure, because now that my opponents are dropping to this store, all of them are gonna start dropping to this store, so we can get a lot of pressure going against them, and we can... Uh, keep rolling for those uh, for those death blows, or at least keep rolling to do a lot of damage on their side. That's the idea behind this. So now I'm gonna go for the Zealous, I'm gonna get another crit. We don't get a crit, sadly, but we do some decent damage, and the finish is probably gonna bring that Bounty Hunter down to zero, so I might still be able to get a kill here. They're definitely gonna go for a kill on my... What? Why did you not go for a kill on the... on the Houndmaster? That's very weird, because now you're at this door, right? So they were probably thinking, oh, I can just go start of next round, I go first, right? So I just click, come hither, and then he dies, and everything's perfectly okay. But no, not really. Now your bounty hunter is gonna die if you click him first, even though you can get a kill. Wow, they're just shifting the pressure entirely and <laughs> getting punished for it. Heavily punished for it, I might add. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. I prefer to save the doggy with the regen and just go for a death store like this. There are two arguments here. You could either go for an immediate kill, or you could just click the doggy, regen yourself for free, and go for Hound's Harry, which might get the kill and also hurts all the other characters. I prefer this because uh, it's it's just overall gonna be wow. It's just overall gonna be better. In, uh, in terms of actually killing all of the enemy characters, and I still have a lot of attacking actions to kill this bounty hunter. If I don't get the kill immediately, I can still get the kill. So crit 56, this musketeer has gotten three crits, that's actually unbelievable. And right now I am just gonna go ahead and uh, heal here, just to stay alive with this crusader, I don't want him to die. And I'm also gonna heal the bounty hunter a little bit, just to, just to top him off, right? So right now, if they want to go for a kill with, for a heal with the occultist, which they don't, this person just doesn't know what healing is. They have a very decent team for defense, but <laughs> they don't know what healing is. Since they do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the kill, and then I'm gonna, uh, and then I'm gonna drop a, maybe even just a, a move forward. Uh, they still have healing skills, so I have to go for the kill now if I want to get it. Even though I can get hit by the punish, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna move into position 1 and just try to drop a finale because I already have 3 damage buffs, so I, I can drop a finale on whoever I want. I don't need to drop a Dirk Sab here, I need to tell my opponent, look, I have uh, I have 3 finale buffs, I have a question for you, how are you gonna answer it? That's, that's the idea behind this move here. So they actually somehow missed this time around, now that I have less dodge, <laughs> which... You know, just butcher circus things, I guess. The musketeer isn't quite jumping to zero HP, which is sad. That means that my handmaster is gonna die here. But it's not the end of the world. I can still go for a kill whenever I want. Now, one thing, one thing that could completely throw this match is me not doing enough damage to the flatrons. 15 to 27, but we get a max roll there, so that's your flat round call, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now, that is going to heal the other characters a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. They can still go ahead and drop a Holy Lance, and they're probably still going to go down to zero. Unless the occultist hits me first, or something of the likes, but at this point, things just look uh, quite good for me. They're going to stab the position 1 character, even though I don't really mind whatsoever. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a Holy Lance on the Musketeer, and then just go for a kill with the Commander, and it's going to be all over for my opponent. 
So yeah, this team has a lot of options as to what you want to do. Not a, not a lot, a lot of options. It's not the DOT team with the most options. That would be the Winterblix DOT. But it has a decent amount of options, and it has a decent amount, decent amount of plays, decent amount of answers to most matchups. There's definitely a lot of things you can do with it. Its biggest problem is just rolling against those damage teams. And you just lose one character, you lose two characters, and you're in a really rough spot. Because unlike the Winterblaze DOT, you don't have a Flatulant, you don't have a Shield Breaker, you don't have an Antiquarian with that reach, and you know, you're definitely lacking in some regards, but... Uh, but at the same time, you know, you have a Crusader, you still have some relative tankiness, and you do also have the one-shot potential. You always have that pressure of having the Hounds Rush. I've I actually played this team against Hidden Squids a very, very long time ago in the best of three that we did. And he made like a few questionable decisions because I had the pressure of going Hounds Rush. So he tried like guarding a character or like going flare to get rid of those marks, thinking after the come hither, thinking that you know the Hounds Rush pressure is there, so I probably want to stay away from it. Though the real danger is actually the Hounds area. But you know, the Hounds Rush is there, it could do enough. It could do enough to bring you down to zero and uh, kind of turn the tides with the match. It's definitely a possibility. It's what we tried doing with this Musketeer, and uh, it worked, it worked, so it did. So now my opponent just surrenders, and then it's going to be GG. So definitely try this team out. I used to call it Halo Comp, but fun, because that's what it is. Like, Halo Comp is just the exact same thing. It's just Arbalest crit one shot, then Crusader stuns, and uh, you know the other characters kill. This team has a few, has a, a bit more nuance to it, and also has a doggy, which is the best character in the Butcher Circus, right? We really love him. I wish this was like Hades, where you can pet the doggy. You can't pet the doggy here. I heard they're adding pets to DD2, but uh, I don't think it's. They said it wasn't going to be like a pet simulator, so you couldn't like pet them or anything. So it's just. It's just like cosmetics to, to sit there, which, I mean, I guess I guess it's better than not having them, but I really wish you could do something more with the doggies. I love animals. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.